Hey, Canada, we need to talk. So there is some new polling out from Abacus Data showcasing that Canada right now is most likely, if an election were held today, would elect a majority conservative government. And I have to say, look, I'm going to go through some of this data here. I don't think a lot of Canadians really understand what they are currently supporting. And I say that knowing, knowing polling when it comes to how Canadians feel about certain issues, about, about health care, about gay rights, about cannabis. It does not align with where the Conservative Party is. It's important to point out, just at the front here, before I get into any of this data, the current leader of the Conservative Party, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not arguing on behalf of the Liberals, the NDP, anybody else. I just want people to understand. The current leader of the Conservative Party, Pierre Polyev, voted against cannabis legalization, against gay marriage. He voted for restrictions on abortion and has spent his entire life, which his entire life has been in Parliament, his entire working life, working on behalf of massive corporations and against the working class. That is simply a fact about Pierre Polyev and what the Conservative Party generally has done. Now, some of that you could argue the Liberals have as well. The Liberals, I would say largely, work mostly for corporations and against the working class as well. But there are more issues at hand here that that tie into this where it's it's important for people to understand. <laughs> you should not you should not have your vote I I would say in any in any case not have your vote solidified for any one party at this point. So I'm going to go through some of this data and when it comes to I mean there is I would say some more alarming aspects of this than others. But let's start here with uh, the overall committed vote intention. So again, this is Abacus data, their recent poll out. This is out today, April 11th. And uh, currently, conservatives sitting at 44%, with the liberals sitting at 24 NDP sitting at 17 uh, the Bloc Quebecois at 6 and Greens at 5 Now, this would more than likely result in a conservative majority government. Regardless of who wins the next election, whenever that is called, regardless of who wins the next election, I think it's important that we have a, a minority government. Meaning, at the very least, there is some barriers on what one party can do with the power that they may have if they have a majority. You, at the very least, want some opposition there. So, which would, you know... The assumption being that it would pat down some of the more extreme aspects of, say, a conservative government if they were to form a minority. If they have a majority, then they can do whatever the hell they want. And I think it's important to avoid that situation. Now, this is breakdown by province. So check out whatever your province is. Across the board, you see here, except for Quebec, where, of course, the Bloc Quebecois have a larger percentage, there is a large percentage of a conservative vote, the, the plurality in every single province, and the majority in some cases, like Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. The, uh, the I mean, it, it, it's worth saying, while yes, there are clear differences between the liberals, the NDP, and the Greens, a lot of those voters, I know because I know many of them as well, move between the parties. So... That typically, this is why, this is always going to be a problem when it comes to a first-past-the-post system where you have the left vote, for a lack of a better term here, being split among three parties, and the conservative vote largely is going to one party. You could argue the PPC has some of that support as well, but it's, come on, <laughs> they're, not, they're not much of a party right now. So this is always going to be a problem for the, um, you know, more progressive side of the country, which is the majority. They are the majority, but their vote is split among three different parties, so they do not uh, form majorities. Now, the federal vote intention by age here is very interesting. 18 to 29-year-olds are currently sitting with 42% in support of conservatives, which is uh, a problem, <laughs> I would say. I This to me is, you know, again, 
Looking at the split here, you could argue, oh, yeah, but if you add together the liberals, the greens, the NDP, that makes it more than the conservatives. Okay, whatever. But just this support should not be this high. Now, a lot of this, of course, I'm sure comes from provinces that are a little more conservative. Regardless of that, young people generally, and I know this not based on looking at what party they support, but looking at the kinds of policies they support. This does not align with where young people generally are in terms of gay rights, for example, or cannabis legalization. This does not align at all. Or, you know, support for increasing uh, money towards healthcare. Like, this does not align with the values that most young people hold. But this does show you how effective I think the Conservative Party has been at positioning themselves as a party that cares about working class people, that cares about housing, which, you know, maybe I'll just spoil a bit of this now because we'll get to it later. But I mean, the the housing stuff is ridiculous when you have uh, big real estate executives among top donors to Pierre Polyev's campaign or his uh, the, the party. And the worst offender when it comes to real estate is a conservative uh, MP, or I should say the worst offender in parliament is a conservative MP. I'll get to more on that later. But th this is just, to me, this shows more of how effective the conservatives have been at marketing themselves uh, as opposed to anything else. This isn't necessarily about the values that they hold. So split of gender here as well. Uh, I see more males support conservatives compared to female. But apart from that, it's, I mean, liberals are exactly the same. Uh, similar numbers here. Impressions of Justin Trudeau. This is where we get to why I think the numbers are where they are. A lot of people, for good reason, left and right, do not like Justin Trudeau. So negative is currently sitting at 58%. It's been around that for a while. And positive sitting at 25%. If the liberals have any hope of avoiding a majority conservative government, Justin Trudeau has to step down. There has to be a leadership race to replace him. This is, I think, the driving factor for support going to the conservatives because they, in the minds of many Canadians, are simply the other option, the other viable option that can form government. Because looking at impressions of Pierre Polyev, they're not remarkable. I mean, sure, he's, there's more positive than negative, but it's 39% to 34%. The same negatives as Jagmeet Singh. Jagmeet Singh's positive just just lower here at thirty three percent. So it's not like you know Pierre Polyev's uh, incredible message and charisma is why is why the conservatives are are doing so well in polling. No, it's because people don't like Justin Trudeau. The easy solution here for the liberals to avoid, at the very least, a majority conservative government would be to replace Trudeau. Now, this is where we get to uh, key issues. So they. They didn't put Jagmeet Singh in this list, but Trudeau, Pierre Polyev. Some of these make sense, like dealing with Donald Trump if he becomes president of the United States again. Um, people think Pierre Polyev would be better at that. I mean, the obvious reason being that they're both conservatives. So, you know, dealing more dealing better with Trump doesn't necessarily mean it's better for people. I would say it's probably not <laughs> good for people, but you could argue he would be better dealing with him than Trudeau is. Uh, making life more affordable for you. This is where we get to how effective the conservative message has been, despite all the support they have in terms of, or, or despite the the policies they support in terms of wanting to, uh, you know, cut public services. There's there, the impressions here that, that people get of him is that he is much more equipped to deal with <laughs> affordability than Trudeau, which, to be fair to people, they see Trudeau currently in power. And things aren't affordable. Now, I would argue that no party, even the NDP, have no real solutions here. Though I would also argue some are better than others. The gap here shouldn't be this far. I think neither of them deserve support, really. The uh, managing the economy and creating good-paying jobs. Similar number here. Uh, protecting and improving the public health care system. Which, it, these numbers, again, are weird to me. Considering, considering Pierre Polyev is not proposing any massive investment into healthcare, 
The most he has said is that he supports the investments that Trudeau recently made. Like that, <laughs> there's no real differences here, um, except for the the threat of further cuts. Seeing how we have seen the conservatives in the past work making child care more affordable. Trudeau leading that because he has actually done that while in power with the liberals. Liberals have passed affordable child care. And I've experienced that myself. That has been one of the obvious benefits of the liberal government. Uh, taking action to deal with climate change, again, because of all the arguments against, from the conservatives, against the liberals in terms of what Trudeau was doing with climate, it's obvious that Trudeau would win this category. And then keeping tax low as possible across the board. Yes, that's true. I mean, that's going to benefit the wealthy more than anybody else. But yes, Pierre Polyev, we keep taxes lower than than Trudeau. And uh, building more housing and making it more affordable. This is where things are real stupid. 43% support here for Pierre Polyev compared to uh, Trudeau at 29. I mean, so to be clear, this is an issue generally. Housing affordability, no party has a solution to this. Not the liberals, not the NDP, not the conservatives. But uh, this is a great piece from Ricochet. With a third of MP MPs profiting off the housing crisis, how can we ever expect them to solve it? The worst offender, as I showed you earlier, is Marty Morantz. This is a conservative MP who is the most prolific real estate holder in parliament. He co-owns an unspecified number of rental properties in Edmonton and 16 in Winnipeg. Morantz is the president and director of Winnipeg-based companies, uh, Durant Investments, real estate commission financing company, a real estate holding company which partially owns a property that leases commercial real estate to Public Works and Government Services Canada, and Levmore Mortgage Corporation. He also owns shares in all three. This guy, he also owns trust units in Artist Real Estate Investment Trust. That like, <laughs> this is for me. Stuff like this is the biggest giveaway. Who, the, in terms of like this individual here, is the the enemy of affordable housing in Canada. When you see him align him, not even just align himself, become a part of the conservative party, that should tell you something. The idea that the conservative party will be able to address the housing crisis when they represent the interests of people like this. Corporate landowners, corporate real estate investments th is absurd. So, again, I'm not saying the liberals have the solution here. I'm not saying the anyone else has a solution. I am saying the conservatives would make it worse. You simply will not be able to see any solutions, anything um, positive in terms of home ownership or, or affordability or rent affordability come out of a conservative government it's it's not going to happen and as i showed you earlier real estate executives among top donors to pierre polyev's uh, campaign or uh, party now this is worth mentioning i guess T to me this is not as big of a deal as some are making it uh, this this is a big deal <laughs> i'll get to the other part that isn't as big of a deal but uh pierre polyev under fire after video surfaced homophobic and transphobic speech so claiming that trudeau is imposing radical gender ideology allowing people to be themselves and keeping those discussions between parents and their physicians is not imposing anything it's allowing these things to take place allowing these discussions to take place among the experts and among the families involved it is pierre polyev who is imposing his radical agenda by trying to restrict those discussions, and that health care. Now, this leads into what I was referring to when it comes to not being as big of a deal as some make it out to be, but it's still a big deal. Alex Jones supports Pierre Polyev. <laughs> I mean, again, the, the reason why I'm saying this isn't as big of a deal as some make it out to be is because a lot of terrible people may support a policy or an initiative that, or a person that is, is a someone worth supporting or an, an initiative or a policy worth supporting. It doesn't mean that policy or that initiative or that person is terrible. In this case, though, <laughs> I feel like it does. This is, I mean, when you have Alex Jones um, chiming in 
and supporting Pierre Polyev. To me, that, that, that does tell me something. So as the Thai writes here, Jones is the man who once said the government was putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs gay. That is one of his more outlandish ones. But this is more recent. I, I missed this one. He claimed the solar eclipse is a biblical event that is going to be hijacked by the Department of Homeland, Homeland Security and will be used as a test run for martial law. Okay. And of course, you know, Jones has done a lot worse in terms of uh, making up conspiracy theories out of thin air about families uh, that were impacted by... I don't want to get too specific with wording here because of the way YouTube tends to censor any video I do discussing issues uh, that revolve around firearms. But you all know Alex Jones's history. I don't need to break it down. Th this is... The closer we get to a an election in Canada, the more I will begin talking about it. It's just sort of been, you know, in the way you can go, you know, I've done recent videos, or maybe not recent, but I've done videos on Pierre Polyev, many videos on Trudeau and his many failings. But it's important that we are aware of what the conservative party is. You do not want a conservative majority. I get people want change. They don't like Trudeau. I totally understand that. Look at my videos on Trudeau. Look up his name on my channel. That doesn't mean you want a conservative government. So let's just start to pay attention to what the conservatives are pretending they support, what they're saying versus what they actually support. And I will begin to talk more about that, The again, the closer we get to an election.